everybody. Welcome to another episode. What is Ooh, that? Voice? What is that? <laughs> episode of Who Invited Her. We are San Diego's LGBTQ Pop Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Tony. I'm here with my other host. I'm Daddy Bear Eric. Yeah, you guys, right now it's just us, but we have a very special guest coming on. We do. Um, Mason Lee. He yes. is. Like, if you guys are not following him on social, you need to. He's an advocate, uh, an educator. He is a trans man. He owns Transform Photography. We're going to get into his journey, his story. And he's one of the finalists for um, Influence Me TV, a new reality TV show that's coming that they're actually casting for. He made it to the final. So we're going to talk about yeah. all of that. And he was one of your thirst traps. Yeah, he was so actually cool. originally one of my thirst traps a couple weeks ago. And he listened to the show. And then he messaged me. I was like, come on the show. I want to <laughs> talk to you. Um, so we have him coming on. It's going to be a great conversation. But before we get to that, I do want to give a big shout out to Moe's Universe here in San Diego. is celebrating its 30th year anniversary this weekend. So... Thursday night, this last Thursday, um, Eric and I had the opportunity to go to their VIP party. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what to expect. And shout out to Marcus for getting us the tickets yeah. for that. Um, it was insane. Everybody of every, anybody, what is the saying? The who's who of San Diego, yes. the LGBTQ plus community was there. Like literally every single drag queen we've had on the show was there. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it was so packed. I it felt like it was Pride weekend already. It did. Yeah, like summertime was here and open Pride bar. was happening. Yeah, open, open bar. bar was oh. messy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I first of all, ja, so as our audience knows, you remember them, they've been on the show Quinn and Jasmine. Jasmine was there. She was working front door. She looked amazing. She yes, very Jessica Rabbit vibes. Fuck, really she so beautiful. Good. So did legendary drag queen Glitz Glam. Yes. Amazing. Looked amazing. Yes. Um who else did we see? The Grotesca was there. He's yeah. been on the show. Miriam looked great. Miriam like, looked her all makeup in is orange with I big know. yellow hair. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was out yeah. and about. It was yeah. really, really cool. And then they brought in Raven, Lady Bunny, and Chad, Chad Michaels. Chad Michaels to do So Lady Bunny group. ended up DJing yes. and performing that night. So did Raven performed and Chad Michaels. It yeah. was packed. I mean, yeah. It was so it was much really fun. Cool. And yeah. so that was Thursday. So Friday night, Moe's had Jackie Beat and Sherry Vine were yeah. in town performing at Moe's. And, and you went to that, right? Yeah, I went for a little bit. Yeah. And I saw Miss Miriam T there and okay. Naomi Daniels, who's been on the show. Um, and then today, I think they're they have another event today. So it's happening all weekend this yeah. weekend. Um, for Mo's, but they're celebrating the 30th, the Homo's universe. So Good it's been them. really cool. You yeah. said Homo's. Homo's? Did I? <laughs> Homo's, but it sounds like Homo's. What did I say? What was the I trying to say? The whole Mo's universe. Like the whole Mo's universe. The whole Mo's universe. <laughs> <laughs> you made a joke without realizing it. I did. Look at me. <laughs> you know what I did last weekend? What? I don't know if I talked about it on the show. We went and saw the finale, the final tour of Rent. Oh, the yeah. The farewell tour and that came was San Diego. It? Actually, it was an amazing cast. Oh. I haven't seen the show in years, and yeah. it's one of my favorite musicals, Rent. So this is their farewell tour. After this, no more, no more. I think they're going to Tokyo next, but yeah. which is really is it like weird. the share farewell tour, Pretty where much. it's, it's yeah. definitely going to happen again. But. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Um, we were actually sitting next to the mom of the guy that played Roger in the show. Okay. And like right before the show started, like he first comes out, he starts the show the character of Roger. Roger, for any of you who know. Um, and she leans over and she's like, I don't tell a lot of people, that, but that's my son. Aww. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, and then first off, I was like, I don't know if that's true. But then, same last name, and she was showing me pictures, and, and I was like, oh, that is your son. He's so good at the show. So get this. So her son is in the touring group of Rent. Oh. Her daughter is in the touring group of Hamilton and plays Eliza. Wow. Yeah. So the touring group is, I think, currently in the Bay Area, and then they're coming down to San Diego for Hamilton, and she's in that production that's wow. going to be here in San Have Diego. two talented children. Like I know. That. I was really like, cool. good for you. It was a great show. It yeah. was a great show, and I love taking newbies who never saw it. So Miss Megan went... Um, my firefighter Stephen went, and then Marcus, who all three have never seen Rent. And oh they loved wow! It. Yeah. Even I've seen Rent. I know that's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what have you been up with you? Um, right. Anything s- exciting? What have I been up to? I've uh, been hanging out in TJ a little How's bit. How's the boyfriend? How's doing, doing really, really well. We're actually going to a disco club tonight in oh, TJ. What's a disco club? Is it the same as a normal club? It's all disco themed with disco music. And yeah. Donna Summer going to be there? No, I hope so. Dead. I'm no. really <laughs> looking forward to it. It's supposedly like a really big deal. What's the? Where's it at? What's the place called? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I want to hear all about the yeah. adventures. I was invited to go, but you guys are going late. You, yeah, we are. And, and it, I'm it, an old man. It, we might stay out to like four in the morning. Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, no. I cannot do that. <laughs> I would be like, where do I take a nap? Somebody give me a nap. A disco nap? <laughs> a dis- I'll need more time. than a disco nap, you dumbass. <laughs> A disco nap. Look at that joke. I know. Today. I came with jokes today. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh my god! But it's um, it's been it's been a kind of a weird week with yeah. like everything, work and all of that kind of stuff. But we are very happy we have Mason Lee on the show today. It's gonna be a good interview. I'm really it excited to talk to him. Yeah. yeah, we've been wanting him for a long time. Yeah, so I'm glad. And it's kind of funny because he was my thirst trap because I think he's so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll probably be a little nervous yeah, with how you guys are handsome, now. <laughs> very handsome. But you guys, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we will have Mason Lee. So we'll be right back, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere you listen to podcast. Give the show a five star rating, cause these narcissistic assholes need it. If you're watching the show on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And thanks for listening. Everybody, we are back, and we're here with our guest that I'm very excited about. <laughs> he was originally, um, for all of our listeners, my thirst trap from a couple episodes <laughs> ago. It is act. Uh, adv- I can't say the word. Advocate. <laughs> Thank you, there advocate, you <laughs> educator, overly trans man, and owner of Transform Photography. Mason Lee is joining us today. Hi, Mason. Hi. Hi. First so off. Congratulations, because you just got engaged. I did. I did. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Um, we're so excited. It's been, it's been ridiculous already, and it's only been a couple of days. So uh, yeah, we're it, really excited. on your social media. Like the pictures and the videos are so freaking cute. First of all, you and Ashley are like the cutest couple ever. If you guys are not following, yes. <laughs> Mason, go follow because it's like so cute adorable i yeah. know it's so disgusting i hate beautiful, it beautiful <laughs> beautiful yeah, yeah. I, I disgust myself sometimes because i used to be that guy that looked at couples like yeah. how is that even real like how is that possible to feel that way for somebody but yeah here i am and and your your guys's whole like relationship journey has been on social media and as like somebody who only has known you through social media it's like i feel part of it <laughs> that's a weird <laughs> thing to say like no, when i saw no. that you guys got engaged i like i had told you earlier i got so excited for you both and i'm like i don't even know these people <laughs> <laughs> we've gotten we've gotten so many messages like that and again it's just so surreal that there's anyone who knows who i am nonetheless that care enough about me throughout my entire journey but now to care for ashley in the same way and yeah for people to see her the way that I see her is is something so special to me. So I'm so glad that I'm able to to share that with that people. That is so awesome. So you guys are in Ohio, right? Cleveland? Yeah. Uh Cincinnati. Cincinnati. We just moved to Cincinnati last summer. Oh, okay. cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. And you guys traveled the actually West Coast in your RV. Yeah. <laughs> you, did yeah. you start in San Diego originally? Yeah, we did. Yeah. And then you we went started- all the way up the coast, right? We sure did. Okay, yeah. I have questions like on everything. How okay. did you guys decide, dude? Let's get an RV. We're gonna pack it up <laughs> and do pretty much like the West Coast Trail all the way up. And did you guys get in fights? How was it like living in a cramped space with somebody? Because yeah, I would right? kill somebody. Oh, it, yeah. So if you ask her, she has a very different perspective of it. But um, <laughs> so to to answer your question in the beginning, when we obviously met in San Diego and. Yeah. Um, I was living in my own place with a roommate. She she had her own place, um, but it's so expensive. San Diego is ridiculously no expensive. Yeah. I love I love it. That place has my heart. I Man, it's where I fell in love with her. But it's just so expensive. So when we decided that we didn't want to spend thirteen seventy five for a you know two hundred and fifty square foot apartment anymore, 
Um, her parents have an RV they've had for many years and yeah. love to travel and COVID hit. So we were like, well, what are we going to do? Um, Cause I had dropped a lot of hours with work. So we looked into getting an RV. She has, she had lost her job because of COVID after 13 and a half years. So Shit. now we were in San Diego, she didn't have work and I was working very minimally. So we were just like, you know what? We're going to buy an RV. And we did. And we found one by the off chance that it was in the back of the lot and they weren't even going to show us. It ended up being perfect. So we bought it. And uh, yeah, we started in San Diego, went all the way up the coast, um, Oregon, Washington, uh, Montana. I mean, we just went so many places and it was incredible. Oh, that is so. I don't recommend doing it with three, four animals. Oh, that's right. Whoa. You had all your animals because you have a lot of animals. Yeah. Because you were yeah. you you were a dog trainer for like six years, yeah. weren't you? Before you yes. got it, before COVID, and then you started the photography thing, yeah. right? Exactly. <laughs> I love how much of my life that you know. Uh, well, I follow your instant. <laughs> I'm like makes, obsessed. So happy. No, I love it. It, it. it makes me. It makes my heart warm. Um, yes, I was. Yes, I was a, a dog trainer, and I loved every second of it. But. Um, it wasn't a great situation that I was in uh, work-wise for a while. And then when COVID hit, it was just kind of an eye-opening experience for both of us. Like, you know, it's now or never. We, yeah. we, we are taught to wait to live our lives until we're retired um, instead of living them right now. So we bought the RV and figured it out as we went. We, we bought it and left. I mean, it was pretty much, we wow. bought it, we got a storage unit. Wow. It was like, we're going to go. And we had no idea where we were staying the first night. That's yeah, no, ballsy. Um, That's ball. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, I need to over plan for this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and, and I think with a situation like that, yeah. you know, it is one of those things. It's like, you're either going to under plan or you're going to over plan. But if we've learned anything, it's no matter how much you plan, there will be so many things that happen that you did Ain't not that plan for. <laughs> uh, especially living in an RV. So yeah, it was a wild, wild, wild ride, but I'm such a wanderlust at heart, you know, at heart. I love being in new places and yeah. seeing things and it was it was great. Was where really where did you live in San Diego? What part of San Diego were you guys North in? North Park. Oh, okay. Close. I'm in Hillcrest or we're yeah. on Hillcrest. Yeah. So you're like right there. I, yeah. I worked at I worked at Gossip when I first moved to San Diego. Oh. No. <laughs> so you know months. Mo yeah. and everybody. Yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, yes. wait, Mo's oh, been on our show. I've known Mo yeah. for a long time. That's oh, funny. And Frida oh, and Darcy, all of those kids. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how yeah. funny. <laughs> Small world. Small yeah. world. All, I miss it there so much. I want to come back. Yeah, it's COVID did a number. We lost a couple of our yeah. our gay bars and gay spaces, yeah. but they're slowly coming back, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. So but um, Mo, speaking of gossip, Moe's Universe this weekend is celebrating their 30th anniversary here in San Diego. That's so, I love that so much. Yeah. I love, that. I wish Cincinnati had more of that stuff here. How is the scene out in Cincinnati? Yeah. Compared to like, let's say here, I guess. Oh, it's black and white. I mean, it's not even really? anywhere near the same, but we're kind of a little bit outside of Cincinnati. So we're in a smaller part of, you know, a country town. Um, yeah. But Cincinnati also has a, has a great um scene as well i just i'm so old now i just don't i'm Please. i'm tired by eight wait 30. how old are you He's, you're gonna be like i'm 20 something <laughs> I'll, I'll be like what i'll be 32 in August. see what i mean yeah. that's not old i'm that's old, old. That, whatever yeah. dude <laughs> my, my body is that of a 90 year old so <laughs> oh um, i hear you on that I'm i don't like... i don't go out and explore as much as i did in san diego i yeah. will say that though. Sure. so i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure I, I haven't i haven't met a lot of people out here Oh, really? So, yeah. I mean, it's, all my friends are still out in San Diego. In San Diego. <laughs> so, I so mean, when, you were, when you and Ashley were doing the RV, you were doing a lot of photography of your guys' journey. How did you start Transform Photography? Like, when did that kick in and you started the business? And what is the business? Because it has a very different viewpoint. Your, like, mission statement is different than other photographies ar photographers yeah. around. Um, I mean, I think... I've always loved taking pictures. I've always loved being behind the camera. Um, it just has kind of helped me see the world in a different light. And it's just been a, a therapy avenue for me for the longest time. But when COVID hit, I think when nothing else was open, when Ashley and I first started dating and I went out and bought my first camera, we just walked around San Diego and I took pictures of empty streets. I mean, it was such a different perspective of that city that is yeah. constantly moving and there's always people around 
to be walking in downtown San Diego with nobody but me and her, like, and being able to, to document that, it just kind of made me fall in love with that silence and that, mm. that um, therapeutic feeling that I had with yeah. being behind the camera. And of course, with being a part of the community, um, wanting to be another avenue and another, um, I don't know, person to just represent our community within the photography, you know, community as well. So yeah, COVID kind of let me learn on my own and watch YouTube videos and get out there and shoot and try it. And I just fell in love with it. I mean, I fell in love with every aspect of it, but traveling and getting to do it, even though I wasn't getting paid for it, like it was so much fun. I mean, yeah. it was the greatest, greatest thing ever. But um, I think my whole vision behind it is just really wanting people, anyone who steps in front of my camera to, to just be themselves. There's so much in the photography industry that's very um, staged and um, I'm not good with, I'm not good with giving direction. I'm horrible with giving direction. I'm way too <laughs> passive for it. Um, yeah. People are like, how do I stand? How do I do this? How do I do that? I'm like, I hate that question. That makes me very uncomfortable. Um, I don't know how to answer that. But what I know is that your most beautiful moments are the, are the moments that you aren't prepared for and the moments that you aren't ready for. And that's the kind of stuff that I like to get on my camera. people look back on and think I didn't realize how special that was or I didn't realize how important that must be or before I would have looked at this picture and said I don't like this I don't like this I don't like this but now I can look at this picture and say there, there are there are all these things that I do love so um, I think it kind of helped me as well as trying to get it in front of the camera and trying to do that myself it's so easy for me to say mm. it's so easy for me to give advice and I'm the worst person in taking it so <laughs> I think I think getting behind the camera kind of has helped me do that for, for myself as well yeah. as other people. So, yeah. And that's how I actually discovered you was from your photography of San Diego. It popped up. I remember on my Instagram feed mm. and I just love your style. It seems like you said, very unstaged and kind of yeah. like a, a glimpse of real life, but a different viewpoint on San Diego as somebody as a native. I really yeah. appreciate that. I was just like, I really, and then I started following you and I was like, freaking hey, he's hot. And then I realized you were a trans man and I was like, oh my God, he's so amazing. <laughs> and then well, I, I kind of went I've into a rabbit that. hole and started following all your TikTok. <laughs> watching and i have to say like my favorite tiktok is of you changing the diaper i watched that i couldn't stop laughing it was so funny. i that's like oh my, my favorite one that you did i think the funniest hate comments that i've gotten are on that video of people women who have told me that i should never be around children because are you I serious have, uh. i have a gag reflex and i it was I funny handle. i thought it was it hilarious it smells like that but oh yeah that was ashley's nephew henry yeah um, and um, I'll never forget that moment. And I think that he's only two and he'll probably never forget that moment either. So. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was historical for both of us. Right? <laughs> so I, I know as queer people, we all have that moment of realizing that we're kind of different than the norm. I know like as a gay man, I, I went through that. You did. So yeah. you as a trans person, when did that happen for you? Like that journey start? When did you realize... Oh wait, I'm different than other people. Uh, I was so young. I, I really can't even put a put a, a number to it. Um, I just remember being. I, I guess the 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 furthest back I can go is is always remembering what a nightmare school shopping was with my mom. Yeah. Um, because I was always in the wrong section, and there was no way for me to. Um, talk about that there was no way for me to understand that because I didn't understand what it meant to be trans I didn't understand what it meant to feel this way I felt like you said very different something wasn't sitting 
why can I see all of these other girls around me that seem so happy and confident and, and beautiful and, and love what they're in. And then I even think about me wearing something similar or looking similar. And it was the biggest panic in the world. It was, it was a feeling that I just didn't recognize or didn't understand. Yeah. And, but it's, it's been that way since, I mean, really as long as I can remember. Yeah. I think every queer person kind of goes through that where they're like, Oh, something's not right. And then you're not fitting in with the norm, especially when you're in school. Yeah. yeah it's rough. When I did you, I couldn't imagine going through school now and, and going oh, through God, and... no, with social media and yeah, stuff. Social oh, yeah. Media, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I always say that is back in the day. And even though it wasn't that long ago, when I was in school, if someone didn't like me, I knew it because they were coming to beat the crap out of me, not yeah. go tell, kill myself on social media. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's so, it's so different. It's so, so, so different. And yeah, and it was kind of like you left school and you knew you would leave the yeah, bullying. Because you were done you would, for the day. Where now you go home, you open this kids open their social media and it continues. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's oh, I can't imagine that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No thanks. When did you realize you got the verbiage and you were like, Yes, I know I I I'm trans. When did that realization come come for you? Um, I think I started to learn really more about the trans community when I was in my early 20s. Um, I think I was 20, maybe 22 or 23 when I had my first conversation with another trans guy that I'd been following for a long time on social yeah. media. Um, I remember sitting in the movie theater with my mom. I don't remember what I was watching, but I didn't watch the movie and I had this entire conversation just about being trans and about what it meant and how did you know and what did you feel and all of the questions that people ask me now a day. Yeah. Especially. Yeah, such a such a humbling, a cool experience to go full circle. But um, yeah, I mean, I would probably say early twenties that I really started to understand what that meant because I didn't really have anybody to look up to in that sense, especially before social media came around and yeah. people were living their lives publicly. So yeah, and there wasn't. I even remember growing up just being gay. There wasn't a, a lot when yeah. I was. It was really especially coming from a Latino background with all the machismo. No. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. So in a way, I think even kids today, at least there's a little bit more representation like the when we grew yeah. up, but I don't think it's still enough. I mean, Absolutely not. if you even look now, like what was it? Um, MJ Rodriguez was the first openly trans person to win an, a Golden Globe finally yeah. after how many years of the Golden Globes? Right. Right. It took this long? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even I just if, even just having trans representation in in movies in general. I mean, oh yeah, for, yeah. For the longest time, you know, from things that I had seen and research that I had done, they were if there were such roles being written in movies, they were still trying to cast them by cisgender people. So yeah, you know, it's that's it's, very true. Yeah, it's a uh, crazy. When crazy did deal. the when did you start the transition? Like, how did you? When was that moment you decided I am comfortable enough? to start the actual physical tran transition. Cause I know we get, we get a lot of younger audiences that listen yeah. to us and a lot of kids that don't have any, why they listen to our bullshit. I don't know why, <laughs> but I like, I love having people like you on because I know there's going to be some kid out there in some Bodunk town yeah. who this may be their first interaction yeah. with somebody like that. It's like them. So yeah, like yeah, for you, yeah. how, how did that transition start? When did you realize and when was it, when did you make that conscious decision? This is the path I'm, I'm, I need to be my authentic self. Um, I think, well, when I made the decision, I was 24. Mm -hmm. I was, it was, I think 2015. Um, and I was actually living in North Carolina at dog training school when I told my family. And, um, I, I think I kind of just got to that point on being on social media for, for however many years at that point as a lesbian, even though I was so uncomfortable with that term, not that there's anything wrong with the term, it just didn't fit me. Right. And I felt like I tried to force it to fit me because, um, I had to, because that's what society was telling me that I needed to, yeah. um, but it just didn't, nothing fit. It just didn't feel right. And um, so I was 24 when I first made that decision that I just wasn't, I realized that people are going to say something about you, no matter what you do. 
People are going to talk about you. True. No how you look, no matter how you don't look, no matter what you do, no matter what you do. I mean, especially with TikTok now, you can watch a video about anything under the sun. Anything under the sun. Name the most random thing that you can think of. And it could be the happiest thing that you'll ever see. And you will scroll in those comments and there will be multiple people who have a problem with that video. It does not matter what you do, what you don't do, live your life. And once I got to that realization that why, why am I trying so hard to make myself conform to something, one that I don't need to conform to that doesn't fit me and isn't making me happy. I'm making all of my life decisions based on everyone else around me. When my time comes and I'm not on this earth anymore, do I want to leave knowing I lived my entire life for everyone else? Yeah. Do I really want to do that? Is it going to be a harder road to stand up in the in society nowadays and say, this is who I am and I'm going to be that way no matter how you feel about it? Absolutely. Is it a, a much more difficult decision in a, in a sense that you're opening yourself up to the world to have an opinion about your life more so than they already do? Yeah, absolutely. But guess what? Now I'm at a point where I don't care about their opinion anymore. I don't need their opinion. Yeah. I love me enough to know that this is exact. This is who I am. And now all of these comments that I get and these, these, these very, very, very angry cis men with probably very, very small penises. I mean, I just, <laughs> it's, they, it's, it's always, it's always it's just <laughs> my transition upsets them so much. And why? Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm not losing any sleep over no. you. At the end of the day, you're someone that I'm never going to meet. You're someone that I've never met. You're someone who does not know me. You're someone who will never know me. And your opinion and your view on life is closed minded and that's fine, but that's not me. And it's and their I, own insec day, I'm insecurities. Not, it's their own insecurities. That's I, what it absolutely. boils down it, to. It it's all projection. Yeah. Everything, yeah. every hate comment that you ever receive is projection. Yeah. If you are comfortable and confident enough to be yourself and someone has something to say about it, it's because they don't have that same confidence. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. I know even with this show, yeah. <laughs> like, we, yeah <laughs> it's it's hard to I remember mean, that it says a lot more about the other person, person than it than does it, about yeah. you and that's, that's exactly hard. what i said in, in my one of my last videos is that this um oh the guy the guy who said that i i'm still a woman i just i just don't have tits anymore and i'm yes you. i and remember I'm, that video yes <laughs> listen of all the things that i could do to roast you like after looking at your your videos why <laughs> what is the what is the point killing them with kindness is the worst thing that you can do every single yeah. time. And it's my it's it's been something that's like been my favorite thing to do now. Yeah. Find the funniest thing that I can say <laughs> or the nicest thing that I can say and and put it out there because you don't bother me. Not first of all, TikTok just paid me for your comments, so thank you. Um, <laughs> that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's gonna help for my wedding. Um, so call me a girl all that you'd like. If, if if your insult to me is calling me a woman, I'll take it. Right, the powerful <laughs> creatures on the planet. So, I will take it. But, yeah, I yeah. love it. Like when, when we got our our share of negativity, I would always be like, "Bless your heart, just bless your little <laughs> little heart," and just leave it at that. Because <laughs> it's yeah. like you. It once you engage. I, mm -hmm. I learned early on, it's just yeah. like, there is no point to engage with people like that. It really, it doesn't matter what you say, what you do, they're going to still think the same way they do because they need to work on themselves before they can change that opinion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How, how did your family handle you coming out as trans? How was um, that? They, like? were, they were great. I really, I, I, I kind of pulled a little, a little move just because I didn't know how to tell them or how to say it, but I ended up telling them through text message because I, I told my dad first and I told him through a hypothetical question that, you know, I was yeah. like, what would you say hypothetically if someone that you knew was trans? And, um, he said, I'm going to love you no matter what. Aww. I was like, well, shit, I was sitting at the vet and I was all of a sudden I'm sitting at, a, at the vet with the clinic with the, one of my client's dogs and my dad sends me that text message and I'm like crying and the vet yeah. walks in and she's like, what is going on? Like, why are you <laughs> crying? Um, yeah. So it was a cool moment, but my mom, um, I think my mom had a, a process only because she didn't realize how much I was struggling. She didn't realize how much I was suffering Yeah. and I didn't want her to, so I didn't expect her to. Um, but I think once she realized, once she realized 
that this decision was was going to make me everything that I had been my whole life, everything made sense for her. She, you know, now and now if you ask her, she'll give you ten instances where throughout my lifetime she's like, well, that makes sense. You know, well, that makes sense. Well, yeah. I wish I would have known because I would have paid attention to that or I would have paid attention to that. But in the '90s, we, parents didn't have that kind of education. And, so true. Um, so true. They always loved me no matter what. But yeah, I, they had a really they had a really, really good reaction. My grandmother on my mom's side had a bit of trouble, but because of religion. And mm. I feel like that's probably the most common reason that people have problems. Religion with. will do it. I know that's what yeah. happened with like my that. mom. But she's she's one of my best friends and she's yeah. great. And um, again, once she just saw me come into my own, it just, everything clicked for them. Yeah. But when you think of something so drastic, when you think of a change, change that's so drastic, that one of your loved ones is going to go through, um, you think it's going to be a lot worse than what it is, and yeah. yeah, it's just you get to you get to watch your child grow into the person they were always supposed to be, and to see that pure happiness come along with that, it makes all of the struggles that they had to go through to get there kind of worth it. Yeah, and yeah. I think people forget that you know we have our struggles as queer people coming out. But it is, there is an adjustment for the parents of yeah. the queer people because it's an adjustment for them too. Whether you come out as gay, lesbian, trans, non-binary, whatever it is, that is the people who gave birth to you. They have to make an adjustment too. And I think, I know I've met some people who don't give their parents a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. Like, you know, it's not just about me there. This is something they need to work. I know for like my mom, we grew up Jehovah witness and it took her a while to get used to having two gay sons. Yeah. <laughs> but it, once she did that journey on her own, she is way more appreciative of just queer people in general. But right. she had to do it on her own instead of like us kind of forcing it right. down her yeah. throat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I get that. I think with that specifically, I get that a lot because I, I feel like a lot of the feedback that I get is either parents are just like, this is absolutely not the case. This is not who you are. This is not who you're going to be. And then there's, there's the parents who are going through that grieving process. But I was actually just, just talking to one of my good friends about this is um, the grieving process I totally understand. And yeah. in, in a sense, um, but I feel too often, sometimes I experience that parents lean into this grieving process, like they're losing their child, mm. um, and they're not. And, um, I think I just wish more parents would understand that because something that my, my therapist had told me in the very beginning, when I first started to go see her in Florida is she said to me, would your parents rather have a happy son or a dead daughter? And ever since I heard those words, they have just been ingrained in my brain and it is morbid, but it's reality. And yeah. yes, 100% my parents personally would much rather have a happy son than a dead daughter. And it, it almost leaned that way. There was a time where I almost was not here anymore. And, um, you know, for, for, for me to go through that and for them to go through that and for all of that to seemingly be for no reason in the sense of I could have just been honest about how I felt, but I didn't understand that. Yeah. And I think now having the education that we're starting to have, it really helps kids nowadays not feel like they have to be um, shut in and closed in and feel like be, not being here anymore is the only answer because it's certainly not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just was a, it was just a completely different um, journey for me to get to that decision where this is what I needed to do for me, but, uh, but allowing my parents to go through that with me and giving them, giving them the time to figure out whatever emotions they needed to figure out as long as they were being respectful of me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. they, they can have their time in there and go through whatever they need to do, but they can also respect at least trying to go from different pronouns and going from different names. But I was their daughter for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I had a different name for 25 years. So I understand that it takes time to that slip ups happen. It's not always going to be perfect. Um, it's a journey for both of us, but as long as parents are willing to be on that journey with you, let them have that time. 
Yeah, I mean, that's all you can ask for is them to go on the journey with you. Yeah, it's yeah. better than not than going on and exactly. doing it solo. Exactly. <laughs> but then, exactly. you, but you just brought up about how a lot of um, whether you're trans or just queer teens in general, there was an article that came out with Forbes and it said about 50% of all transgender binary young adults from the age of 14 to 24 in America, 52% have seriously thought about suicide because mm -hmm. of no way, no way out in the situation that they may be in. And that was shocking to me, 52%. That is I, like, how? I can't even, I can't even tell you. I, I, I wish that I was kidding, but I cannot even give you a number of over the last however many years on social media that someone has written me and, and talked to me about that. Yeah. About feeling that way or once feeling that way or feeling that way right now. I mean, it's, it's just, it's heartbreaking. And it's, yeah. it's, part of, it's part of why I continue to do things publicly the way that I do because yeah. I know how much I used to feel that way. And I think to, for you, the one thing that I really admire is how normal you've made your transition and your being a trans man feel like on your social media, it just seems so normal. And yeah. it doesn't seem like that's your complete identity. It's just like, Oh, I just happen to be, exactly. do you know what I mean? Exactly. Where I've seen other social media where it's really focused on that. And right. that's like the main thing, but with you and the way you present your social media and TikTok, it's just very like, it is, this is, it's just like, yeah. I breathe air. I do this too. I'm this too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I mean, love that. I think that is so, so cool that that's, that's like how you decided to present yourself on social media instead of making it very, maybe a negative thing in a way or yeah. making it the sole focus of who you are as a person. Yeah. I mean, I, well, just solely, there is so much more to me than, than being trans, but it, yeah. but it is such an important part of me because it's, led me in my life where I am. It's led me to experiences like this. I mean, to yeah. talk to you guys and, and, <laughs> yeah. and to meet the, the people that I've met and to have the experiences that I have. And um, I, I couldn't do that without sharing who I am. I couldn't do that without sharing that part of my life. But again, if, if, if people, the, 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 the many people in the world who have such a problem with anybody who are different than they are, regardless of whether it's the LGBTQ community or the color of your skin or whatever. It's like, when you realize that the person next to you is a human, just as you are, and if they were to fall, they break your arm, they break their arm just like you would. And they yeah. bleed the same color, just as you would. Everything else starts to become white noise. It's like, why does all of this matter? Why do, why are we spending so much time, effort, money, resources on making sure that certain groups of people don't exist? I, I will never understand it. I yeah. don't get it. So by sharing my normalcy of just, this is my life and this is who I am and come and join the ride or don't, but why do you have to be so focused on me being trans? I just, yeah. I don't understand it's it. So I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask if you have any advice for um, say like f friends who have somebody who's going through transitioning on how to be supportive and, and the best way to kind of help them through that process? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think the number one thing that, that anyone can do that is going through that and, and the people around them is, is just to be there. I mean, just listen. Um, if someone comes and tells you that they don't want to be, um, they don't want to go by he, him pronouns anymore, whether that makes sense to you or not, don't call him he, him anymore. Again, it, it's just as simple as that. You don't, people don't have to understand to support. You don't have to understand to to be okay with the fact that someone else is going to live their life differently. So, um, but our allies are so important. I mean, I know you guys know that just as yeah. much as I do. <laughs> yeah. We need as many allies as we possibly can um, until we're able to be in a world where we no longer have to separate ourselves between the LGBT community and the rest of the world, where we can just be ourselves, where, you know, forms will, medical forms will start to be all inclusive. There won't be are you male or female? Like it will be more of a stop checking a box and just live your life. And oh, no, that would be um, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds so far away, but we're slowly, slowly, slowly getting slowly. There. I mean, um, I know I never thought I was going to live to see the day that 
we can all get married. Yeah, <laughs> I really yeah. didn't think as a teenager and yeah. a young adult, I, mean, I never thought it was going to happen in my lifetime. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I, um, I have a question for you. I'm really curious um, your viewpoint on the physical journey of your transformation. I know people are going to have tons of questions and they're very curious how to go about it. Um, how did you go about it? Like, how did, what were the first steps when you decided to do surgery, hormones? How did you go about starting that journey? Um, the, well, the first thing I did was gone, I went to therapy. I found, okay. um, being in Florida, I, I, I grew up in Tampa, so I was in a pretty LGBT inclusive place. So I got lucky with finding a therapist that works specifically with the community. Um, she was a 66 year old at the time, uh, hippie lesbian. And she is, she is the greatest. And uh, it just, it ended up working out perfectly, but therapy was number one, the thing that I did first, not because I needed to be talked out of it, not because I wasn't sure, but because that is a decision I'm going to make. That's going to change my life forever. Yeah. And I think one of the most common misconceptions, especially with the world of trends that are changing every week is people often think that transitioning means more specifically for trans males that transitioning means bigger muscles, facial hair, um, you know, those kind of physical attributes that, that people think automatically make you male. Um, and it's so much, so much more to that. So therapy was so important to me to better understand my feelings, my emotions, where I was at, so that when I walked into doing testosterone, knowing what that was going to do for me, that I was in a better headspace. Um, so I saw her for six months, and then I um, she wrote a letter of recommendation or whatever they called it um, that I had to show the endocrinologist. Um, and then I think I made an appointment, and then my following appointment, they did blood work, made sure all my numbers were where they needed to be, um, and then they gave me my shirt, my first shot that day um in office and they showed me how to do it uh showed me how to administer the shots and all of that um and every week since then yeah um, and and week. how any advice when if there's is somebody listening and i'm sure there will be that is thinking of going on hormones like you did any advice of what to maybe look for what worked for you uh maybe some side effects that they can they may encounter anything like that um, so there is a few different ways that you can, um, administer testosterone. You can do testosterone gels, which I know a few people who are on them, but the last I heard from a doctor, they weren't as accessible because of maybe more side effects uh, possibly that were happening with testosterone gels. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that is options for, for certain people. Yeah. Um, there is sub Q, which is, um, injection as well, but it's into the fat. Um, most of the time in your stomach rather than intermuscular, which is how I do mine. Mm -hmm. uh, intermuscular, you can typically do in your thigh or in the top of your butt. Um, I did mine in my thigh for a while and I hated every second of it. I have severe <laughs> shock anxiety. Um, it was awful. It hurt every time. Oh, no. Um, I hit my nerve once and it <sighs> shot like a flame <laughs> of fire <laughs> no. down into my foot and then I never did it again. So I just oh. always did it in the top of my butt. And it's been fine. In the top of my butt, okay. I barely feel it. Like, I do not feel it at all. Um, so it's been so much better for me. But again, everyone is different. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it comes to side effects, I know that in, in the beginning, um, the first six months, I felt like I was what people describe they think menopause feels like. Yeah. I was having hot flashes. I was angry because the wind was blowing. I, I just, and I'm not an angry person, but yeah. everything made me angry. And Every, not angry, but I was just always annoyed and frustrated and irritated and very short fuse, um, which I hated. But thankfully, about six months into it, that subsided for me. But again, everyone Everybody's is different. different yeah. Everybody's different. Maybe Some I'm going through menopause. Different. Maybe that's why I'm always mad and sweaty. <laughs> some people, some people literally have the adverse reaction. So yeah. some people will, some people will go from having like a more, um, they're more hot headed normally or uh, or before. And then testosterone completely calms them. So, I mean, it's so hard to tell you what side effects would be, but yeah, exactly. I know that, 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 um, headaches, a lot of people talk about, but I've had migraines for 15 years. So I don't think that has anything to do with the, the testosterone, but hot flashes for sure. Acne, acne was 
got rough for a little bit, oh. more so on my back, but I think that had a lot to do with um, binding as well, wearing the binder being oh, okay. wearing it hot as hell and the binder being so tight, um, all of that sweat and moisture rubbing, you know, in between your skin. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it de that definitely helped when I had top surgery, but um, yeah, I mean, like I said, everyone's, everyone's like, how did you grow a beard so fast? How did you do this? How did you do that? Yeah. I didn't do anything. I injected the testosterone and it's all genetics. It's complete. There's not anything that I'm doing to speed up the process. Um, everyone's transition is different ways. Everyone, everyone's body reacts differently. So there's no way. And I feel bad because it's such a common question that I get. Like, yeah. I want my beard to look just like yours. I want, you know, and I love, I love when people say that, but I also hate it because I want them to love however they come out just yeah. as much. I don't yeah. want them to look like me. I don't want them to want to look like me. I want them to realize that they are perfect exactly the way that they are. And however testosterone ends up affecting them, it doesn't make them less than, it doesn't make them not trans enough. It doesn't make any of those things that we hear so commonly in the, in, you know, in the community. So. Yeah, for sure. And for our audience, we are not medical experts. So go oh, consult your medical oh, provider yes. <laughs> with any further yes. questions. So I'm curious for you personally, how was the top surgery? Like, was that rough to go through? Was it an easy thing? How was the recovery and stuff like and getting adjusted to a new body? Like, yeah. how did yeah. you handle all of that? Um, oh, Top surgery was such a cool experience. Yeah, uh, I. So surgery is like my absolute worst fear in the whole world. Mine like too. Hate, yeah. Mine too. <laughs> surgery, and I've had surgery like four times prior. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew how much I hated it. And I wasn't really looking forward to that process at all. But um, it's such a major surgery. It's a big, it's a big deal medically. It's a big deal figuratively, spiritually. It's a big deal all around. So yeah. it's such a big thing to walk into. But um, the surgeon that I found was Russell Sasani in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I absolutely adore him. I, I don't think he has the same staff now because it's been five years, but um, the staff there was incredible. Um, he only did my surgery that day, which a few other surgeons that I had tried to talk to in, in, the, in the past were doing multiple surgeries a day. Like they were just kind of cranking them out one by one by one. And oh, yeah that's cool and all. And their, their results were great and they were great surgeons, but I, my anxiety was not going to allow that to happen for me. I yeah. needed to know that there was, he was not running through my getting, you know, sawn off my boobs to go saw off somebody else's. <laughs> else's. Like, I needed him to be paying attention to what he was doing. So, um, it was such a great experience. I mean, it was yeah. super early in the morning. It was just him and his, him and his staff, um, just my family. And it was great. I mean, I had such bad anxiety previous, but once I walked out, not walked out, once I rolled out, uh, <laughs> I realized that there was no reason for that. And there was no reason to be nervous. It was, I mean, it's a surgery, so it's natural, but I wasted a lot of time being nervous rather than just being excited about the next yeah. chapter because of, because of things in my head that didn't right. need to be there. Yeah. How, okay. How was it the first time you saw yourself, your chest for the first time? What, what did it feel like for you? Cause I can't imagine, I would think it would be. Have you seen free. the video? I think I did watch it, but I want you to talk about it to our yeah. audience. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an old video, but. Yeah. You, know, you got to like go way back in yeah, your, your feet for that. Um, one. It, it's, I can't even really remember what I thought in that moment, other than looking in the mirror and realizing that for once, for the first time in 25 years, I looked in the mirror and knew who I was. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine looking in the mirror 25 years and, and seeing the person that everyone else sees, but not seeing that? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I felt like that must be it's such, such a, a bad, it's, this is such a bad analogy. And I'm probably going <laughs> to regret this later, but I remember thinking for the longest time when I couldn't pinpoint my feelings is I felt like I had a Halloween mask sewed to my face. And every time I looked in the mirror, I saw something that everyone else saw something, you know, completely different. And it was, it was an awful feeling, but yeah. that first time from seeing my chest, I didn't see anything else, but the man that had been there been the whole time. Oh, that must have felt wow. amazing. I can't even imagine. That must be just so bizarre, it's, bizarre, but freeing yeah. at the same time. And yeah. a bit of like, I can actually breathe now. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? I finally got it. Yes, it was yeah, I could definitely breathe after they got them damn drains out. Um, oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the drains, hand, hands down, are the worst part. I'll do oh, surgery God. 10 times over. 
Oh, the drains. I had to do that uh, when I went through my cancer surgery. Oh, mm-hmm. it was the worst. They hated it. Yeah, so and then when they awesome. take it out, it's just like, oh, uh, it's it, the it, worst. You know, someone was like, how did it feel? I'm like, it felt like there was a snake inside my yes. chest wrapped in Ben Gay that they just yanked out of my chest. Like, and you can like, feel it. You can feel yes. it. Yes, you can feel the worst feeling. Yes. <laughs> nope. Here we are talking about drains on the show. <laughs> yes, everybody. Welcome to Who Might It Her. <laughs> it's, so such I, a, it's such an elegant process. Isn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> I do want to talk about Influence Me TV. You're a finalist for this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So explain what it is answer. and why you decided to audition for it and all of that kind of stuff. Um. I don't honestly even remember how it came about. I don't know if I got an email for it or if I saw it on social media, but um, first of all, it's a hundred thousand dollars if yeah. you win. So, uh, yeah. and I knew that at the time when I was applying, I would be proposing soon. So I'm like, well, a hundred thousand dollars would really help for a wedding. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> but, and it was just, you know, a why not experience. So I just, yeah. I put, put it, put it out there. And if it came back, it came back. And um but I think that I liked that how they started the process of like um, trying to get on the shows, you're helping raise awareness for charities. And yeah. um, the first charity that they did, um, oh my God, it just slipped my mind. I know that the second charity is the cancer, the cancer one, um, the, the BC Cancer Foundation. Yeah. Oh, the Jet Foundation. The Jet Foundation was the first one for mental health awareness and suicide prevention. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just, a, it was a cool way to, to do something fun and, and create random content and uh, raise money and um, yeah, it's been a long process. Uh, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Yeah, because have- it's for everybody who doesn't know Influence uh, Me TV. It's actually a contest to find the next um, yeah. social media star type of person, and it's a reality show. So they had a bunch of people enter. Like there was a lot of people that of people, yeah. applied. And Mason's one of the finalists for it. And you yeah. had to get votes because yeah. I, I went yeah. in and voted and all that. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so you're one of the finalists to be yes. actually on the show yes. and up for a hundred thousand dollars. And I think it, I just think it's awesome, especially for trans representation. Yeah. Um, that was a huge thing too, is yeah. I, I didn't know, I figured that there would probably be representation in the community, which I love. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't sure if there would be anybody, but anybody in the community. And again, when it comes to like being a like a social media star and influencer and all those words, it's like yeah. I'm not any of those things. I don't. I don't do the TikTok dances. I. I. I, I Thank don't, God. Like, <laughs> I, I like. Oh God. I would. I would lose followers so fast if I even tried. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's just, I just, lo- I genuinely love making connections with people. Yeah. And I think that's in, been the biggest every- appeal for me, like as a, as a fan, yeah. I think that's one of the things that really drew my attention to you. It w- didn't seem like all the other Instagram, TikTok influence. There's a, there's a lot of like realness to and what em- your and social emotion media. too. Yeah. There's and emotion. very open about everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, curious, how did you and Ashley first meet here in San Diego? Where was it at? Was that at Casa? She was at, uh, she was, no, 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 God no. Um, <laughs> she was one of my clients. She was one of my dog training clients. Oh, oh how uh, cute. That's like a rom-com yeah. right there. That is. Yeah. Um, so cute. Well, she was actually with someone at the time. And oh, really? We, first met, we, we were, uh, obviously she was my client and we were friends for a while and we started talking more about the dogs and um, she went off to Hawaii for a trip yeah. and uh, her relationship should have been over long before she knew that. Uh, um, so I was, I was there as someone just, that was just a friend. We, we didn't talk about anything. We talked about the most random things in the world. And then when she kind of walked away from that, um, it became something where we just never, we were just always together. I mean, yeah. We were just always together. <sighs> and there's never been one time in two and a half years where I have felt anything different than a person that she loves. Yeah. Um, there's never been question about my transition. There's never been, uh, she's never been with someone a part of the community before. She's not from, she's not a part of the community. She doesn't okay. identify, she didn't identify with being part of this community. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. It, and she's from New Richmond, Ohio. So where we live now, like, 
She's not from a town where you see trans people. She's not from a town where you see LGBT people walking down the street. You see, uh, don't blame me, I voted for Trump. And that's what you see everywhere. And that's just it. And um, not that every Trump person is LGBT, you know, anti-LGBT, but it's not a place where that, where you would feel safe to, to, to really do that. And there was never a question for her. And when it came to meeting her family and all of that was, it was difficult for me because mm-hmm. I just was nervous. I was like, oh sure. God, what are they going to, what are they going to say? What are they like? She's not, she's never, ah, I'm not what she's used to. Like, what are they going to say? What are they going to think? What are they going to, I don't know. Just to, I didn't want that for her, for yeah. any for no no other reason I didn't want that stress for her um and that was never a question there was never any stress for her her family saw that she was happy and has been accepting since day one and loved us and accepted us and um that's part of why we came here I mean we we, we got rid of the RV and moved next door to her parents (laughs) it's just you guys are so lucky you have such a good support like system around you because there's a lot of a lot of people in our community that don't, and they have to make their own yeah. family, especially yeah. the younger younger kids that don't have it so lucky at home. Yeah. So and it's I, like I so have, encouraging to see see that yeah. from you. That's guys. my number one thing is is if, especially with my family, the amount of people who don't have that. If someone can come to my page and feel as though that they're at home for even a split second while watching uh, watching a, a video of mine and knowing that they're loved and accepted for exactly who they are that's all i care about because i know how many people don't have that and i feel i feel it's unfair sometimes for me to have the life that i've had and the support that i've had and um because so many people don't have that and for whatever reason i have been lucky enough to 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 say that i have that experience and i want to share that i mean shit a hundred thousand dollars how many how many guys could have helped with that Exactly. How many trans people could I help with that? How many people of the community could I help with that? Like, that's all that I think about. That's all that I, that I think about day in and day out is, is just, I always said that Ellen was my dream job. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to have the money to be able to just be like, here you go. Let me pay for your surgery that you are killing yourself to, to pay for while you're trying to take care of your family. Yeah. Like that, that's the kind of shit that just fuels my fire. So, Wow. I, I'm just like, I can yeah. listen to you talk all day. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's get me on that show so I can. I know. Yes. Seriously. How do people vote for you? I, I also, all it tells me is that there was, I think there was like 200 free votes. Yeah. And then like 89 vote packages or something. But I also know my circle and I know that probably 90% of those all came from them. Yeah. <laughs> all of my best friends were all in group chats together without me. Yeah. Like calling Ashley. What are we doing about voting? What oh, how many how many are you doing? What are we doing this? What are we I'm like, if all if you no one spend another dime. No one spend another that wasn't the point of this. I don't yeah. want all of you to be spending a bunch of money for me to be put on the show. If it happened, it happened. I I wanted people to use their free vote if they felt like it. Mm-hmm. And if it happened, it happened. If it didn't, it didn't. But freaking psycho spending all the damn money and, uh, <laughs> the only reason why i'm okay with it is because it's going back to a cancer foundation yeah, um, yeah. which is a great cause it's a good cause yeah. the other thing so, i love about your especially in some you have the book club and you introduce so many really good books oh people. my god i know i, I follow I'm it and i'm like excited. always look and see what you're Don't reading next so. i'm obsessed I'm really i love obsessed. it I love I'm it. I always like go look for what it, the ones that I'm like, oh, I want to read that. And you're very honest about your reviews too. You'll be like, no, it dragged. The end was a little boring. Yeah. I didn't really like this writing, but they did a <laughs> yeah. good job. Yeah. Yeah. I have really bad ADHD. So there's certain there's certain writing types and um, styles that yeah. like catch me from the beginning. And then there's some that are just really hard for me. Um, but I've also learned that if you are dyslexic and or struggle with ADHD, obviously they're two very, very different things, but the spacing of the letters on the pages help with how you read. Mm, it like okay. helps you, it helps your brain slow it down a little bit. So it spaces the letters a little bit more, oh. which I have found helps, but there aren't many books out there that actually do that. Um, just a random tidbit. Oh, random <laughs> that is. So, oh. so that's another, I have to find something that I can, that I can pay attention to yeah. where my brain can so before before we let you go, Mason, do you have what is your biggest advice for any young teens, young adults who may be going 
through their transition or figuring out who they are, what's the best advice you would give them? <laughs> Tough question, like, I know. It's such, it's such a common question. And oh, like I bet. Because there's so many, oh my God, there's so many things that I wish that I could say. But if anything, if I've learned anything is the, the power of, of not needing your, of not getting your self-value from other people's words um, is just such a big thing. You, it, it's, it means so much that people spend so much time telling me how much they love me. But at the end of the day, if I don't feel that, they're just words. And it's the same thing for anyone else who is saying anything negative. If anyone is spilling time in your day, spewing hatred or bigotry or uneducation or whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And um, I want people to love themselves for exactly who they are and not be so concerned with fitting into a label or into a box or into what society feels like they should be because that changes every single day. And there, there's a song that says, um, all the good men are taken way too fast. People in general, not just men, obviously, but there's not enough time to be concerned with everyone else and forget about yourself. There's not enough time to be worried about fitting into a box that other people want you to fit in to make them happy when your time is up and you never got that chance. Yeah. And I've lost too many people in my life um, in many different forms that reminds me every single day that I have one chance. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. And if that day is to come and my journey is over, then I know that I made the hardest decision that I can make, but the best decision that I can make. And that was choosing my happiness over anyone else's. Oh. And everyone else that watches and everyone else that pays attention to me, even even a little bit. That's all I care about wanting them to know. Yeah. Because if more people did that, there would be less hate. There'd be less hate on the internet. I think that's so true. Advice. Yeah. God, so well put. Yeah. It has been an absolute pleasure talking yes. with you. I can't believe it's been a freaking hour. I, want I to know. <laughs> God. Oh my I God. Yeah. I am so, so glad you came on the show. Yes. We got to chat with you because if anything, it's just so inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel good. <laughs> Thank you for doing what we do. Thank you for putting yourselves out there. Thank you for having something you like too. this. I mean, you too. Like putting yourself out on social and being tr true to you and showing the real you and being open about you and Ashley's like relationship. It's just so cool. Yeah. I love it. How do people find you on the socials? Give them all the deets. Oh. Fitz Patty Max 21. Uh, I haven't changed it since the beginning. So yeah. it's Patty Max 21, uh, TikTok, Instagram. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Ashley actually said earlier, she's like, if you want me on your podcast, just let me know. I'll come. <laughs> Make an appearance. <laughs> she's she great. But uh, she's still is yeah, she outside I mean, doing yard work still. <laughs> yeah. We're, uh, we're in the process of wedding planning. So the, the fiasco and craziness of that, I'm sure oh, we'll be very entertaining to follow along. So. Yeah. <laughs> How do people find you, Eric? You can find me at Daddy Bear Eric on Instagram. There you go. You can follow me. Uh, it's Tony underscore Baloney underscore Macaroni. You can follow the show at Who Invited Her S. Wait, Who Invited Her underscore podcast yes. on Instagram. Who Invited Her SD on Twitter and Facebook. Don't forget, you can watch us uh, every Tuesday night, 7.30 at Out of TV. And if you're watching us on our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. Um, and that is it. We will yeah. see everybody next week. Thank you again, Mason. It, it was an absolute yeah. pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Anytime, yeah. anytime, anytime. Yeah. We will see everybody next week. Bye.